you so much and thank you for um, having me and welcome to my <clears throat> cleanest kitchen that I've had in a long time. Um, I'm sitting in Bozeman, Montana, which is way far away from where I am from, which is New Delhi, India. And um, yes, um, I was in I House in 2008, well, from 2006 to 2008. And I was reading up, um, apparently I House was the first global community of its kind, and it predates the United Nations by 21 years. So who may brotherhood prevail. And I feel like now even more so in this pandemic, this is like, it's so special just being able to connect with so many people I see and know and love dearly. Um, so we're making a pretty simple Indian dish, but the way we've set this up is I'm gonna like teach you how to make a basic Indian gravy. And from that, you can pretty much make a whole bunch of Indian dishes. So I'm gonna come back to like a little bit more about me, but without further, further ado, I want you to just get your pans going. So just turn that stove on. Hopefully you have a pot, which also has a lid. That would be like a huge requirement. So like get the stove on, get the um, hot, the pan nice and hot. And then we're just gonna wait for that to get hot and put the onions in. And then yeah. Ciara is gonna be sending out little surveys. So if you wanna get interactive and put in your thoughts, um, just sort of check in with that. And my yeah, phone- Yeah, so as you're getting your things together, following Vandana's advice, um, we can't, we, it, it's just too many people. There was so much interest to really do like proper introductions. But we want to know um, where you're originally from and where you're zooming in from. So if you see in the chat and you click on the chat, it's going to take you to a survey um, uh, off, outside of the Zoom room. But but you can enter in where you're zooming from, where you're originally from, where you're zooming from, and that way we can have somewhat of an idea of who's what countries are represented, what cities are represented. And I'll share my screen so you can see that populating. Wow. Vandana is also getting her kitchen in order. So I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. Let me make that bigger. There we go. Ooh. Well, I filled it out first. So I think that's why Puerto Rico's in the middle. <laughs> So we got New Jersey, Belgium, NYC, Germany, Virginia, lots of places represented either from your original location or where you're zooming from. So I just wanted to show us that this is I House. We are I House and I House is our house. And we represent across the US and across the globe. So good to see everyone and all those places represented. And you can continue um, to fill it out. Yeah, and real quick, if you guys haven't actually, um, so there isn't a recipe, but I am gonna make one and send it out. I don't know if you can hear me. Can I be heard? Oh, yes. And then if you haven't already chopped onions, like get crying and start chopping onions. It's like, if you go to an Indian restaurant, that's like the main prep work. It's the saddest, but most important prep work. So like get those onions chopped, chopped, chopped. Get your pan hot. Mine seems like it's warm enough. And then we're just gonna add, so in terms of like oils, obviously everyone knows ghee is like the traditional sort of holy grail of Indian cooking. If you have ghee, that's perfect. Um, feel free to put in like a good tablespoon or two. You can also mix it up with a little ghee and oil. Um, try to get an oil which has a nice high smoke point. So I'm thinking avocado oil. I mean, obviously canola or vegetable oil, those work too. Um, and let's get the oil in the pan. And then in terms of onions, just like one big onion should do. So I'm seeing the questions come up. I think that was Mary. So yeah, just the one onion, chop it up. I'm gonna put oil in. We're gonna try and like stay together with this on each step. But if I go a little ahead or behind, or, you know, just, yeah, we can sort of figure that out. So pan is hot, oil goes in, or ghee or whatever. I'm gonna do a mix. I'm doing ghee and oil. 
and then um yeah i'm gonna talk more about myself once i get those onions in awesome. so i feel i feel like my my oil is is talking to me it's telling me put some onions in here um so i also put i put in another and um, if you guys want to be even more interactive how do you guys feel about cooking an indian dish what's your confidence level so if you want to share that with us that's survey number two I can post it again in case it went right up. So what's your confidence level? Go ahead and put and give us that idea and I'll pass it now to Vandana. Ghee, is that necessary? It wasn't on the list. It's just an option. Since we're cooking Indian food, it's like a really nice option. I know it's not on the list, but so you can even use butter, but just like something that, I mean, something that you normally cook with, just not olive oil. So olive oil doesn't work with Indian food. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about spices. I know that in the basic recipe that was sent out, we just spoke about garam masala. But since you're all in your own kitchens, I'm hoping you have a whole bunch of other spices. And if you have any whole spice, can you share what's in garam masala? So usually garam masala has stuff like cinnamon. I'm going to show this. And I'm not sure why my screen is tiny and Ciara's is like really big, but I'm gonna try and change it up or whatever. Um, normally, you. So normally it has cinnamon, cardamoms. Um, there's something called buddy elaichi, which is this black cardamom, which is very unique. Usually it has bay leaves and cloves. And usually it's like a mix of these whole spices that have been ground down into like a powdered blend. Um, some of them have mace, some of them have like star anise. So there's different like versions of a garam masala. But for now, if um, you have a pan which has hot oil, you can either put any of these. Um, these spices would look be great in a meat dish, but since we're just going and doing like good old veggies, I'm gonna put cumin seeds just because I happen to have them. So I'm just putting cumin seeds in my hot oil. If you don't have cumin seeds, just put your onions in and get them fried. So I know that says I'm already like kind of going off of the recipe a little bit, but that was just like a brief, like spice 101, any whole spices always go in hot oil. Um, if you put any of the ground spices right now, they would burn. However, it's a technique where you're just infusing the oil with the spices, right? So you're infusing um, whatever it is. It could be coriander seeds, cumin seeds, lots of seeds, a lot of like the whole spices that you find in chai, like cinnamon and all that good stuff. So I got my cumin in and um, once you hear them sizzling and popping, this is for like a later date, you can make notes. Um, and maybe if you have your onions all chopped up, then we're gonna stick the onions into the hot oil and maybe open a bottle of wine and start frying onions, which is kind of the key to like a lot of Indian cooking. So that's going in. And then what I like to do just to like kind of quicken up with the um, onions, sauteing is I like to put in some salt because that makes the onion sweat and um, it just helps with um, getting them going. So I'm going to give them a quick stir and at one point I'm going to move my camera so you can see my pan but basically it's just a pan with onions and some of you look like you're cooking some of you are not cooking and drinking wine and that's fine too. Because I was saying earlier, like as far as I house goes, there's this beautiful tradition of Sunday supper. And um, Harry Edmund was this sort of found, he was the founder and he met this Chinese student and he said hello to this Chinese student who was like shocked because he said, I've been in New York for three years, sorry, three weeks, three weeks, and no one said hello to me. And so they had, the Chinese student and some other students come to his house and they made this meal. So I feel like this is really special because we're kind of like making a meal virtually during a pandemic. And it's the same I have spirit and love and brotherhood. So onions frying away and um, Ciara has to, oh, and then now we've got this big screen that Ciara's put on. 
which looks really confusing, but. Let's um, see. Let's <laughs> see what's the confidence level. Um, There's a so question like, from Leah which says, besides whole spices and onions, and I can't read the whole thing just because I'm on my phone. So if someone could read that out. So besides whole spices and onions, should anything else be sauteing? No, not yet. But if you want to get your ginger and garlic like prepped right now, that would be a really smart thing to do. So get your garlic, chop it up. And then if you have fresh ginger, peel your ginger and then grate the ginger. So prepping all that would be nice. So a little bit more about me while we're frying the onions. Um, I actually met my husband while I was in I house thanks to a common friend. And um, lo and behold, I moved to Montana from that, um, from that meeting in I house. And I've started an organization, it's called Prana Buzz, and it's like married my beautiful passions of yoga and art. And I have these pop-up events, which try to like collaborate, which try to build community around those like creative or spiritual like mediums. Um, in New York, I studied integrated media arts. I did a master of fine arts at Hunter College and Macon has found Garam Masala. Okay. And um, yeah, and I've been in Montana now since 2011. So it's been a long time. Um, any other questions? How much ginger? It looks like Ali, you didn't even, you, you didn't get the recipe, but like, I would say like a one to two inches of ginger should be enough. And um, I was hoping people could kind of Whoever wants to, you don't have to, but if you wanted to sort of like give a little brief intro of who you are, and if you were in I House, what your favorite I House moment was, that would be really cute. And another one was, what is your favorite Indian dish? And if you like give me your favorite Indian dish, I can essentially tell you from where we're at, how we can like use the same basic um, sauce that we're making to essentially make that same dish. I'm just stirring my onions. And this first stage of like getting your onions fried is really key. Um, something that I talk about a lot in previous classes I've done is that we're not getting the onions to like just um, a translucent stage. We're not caramelizing the onions. We're trying to get them golden brown which means that the edges literally look burnt. So that's why it takes a while. There's a lot of stirring and you just have to kind of like stay with it. It's like the most important step. I'm going to move us over a little bit. Sandana, are yes. we supposed to chop the ginger or grate the ginger? So I like to grate the ginger as opposed to chopping because if you chop it, you sometimes get that big like mouthful of ginger. So I would say grate it. And you could just use a cheese grater. Thank you. Leah wants to know something. If her if the edges of the onions are burnt, should we take them off the heat? Oh, and yes, please like try to do this at a medium, medium heat. Don't uh, take it off the pan at that stage. If you've already got your onions nice and golden brown, you can stick your ginger and garlic in. Um, I'm like far from that, but if you're already at that stage, you can just go ahead and stick your ginger garlic in. Um, if you like having some like heat level and spice, this is a good time where you can also add like a chili. Um, it could be a green chili, it could be a serrano, it could be a poblano, it could be any like chili that you like. Um, if you don't have a whole chili, you can also do like, you know, ground spice, but that's going to come later. This is my little Indian masala, um, masala box, and we'll get to this later. So hopefully everyone is, has a hot pan with onions that are sauteing, and we're waiting to get them to that nice stage. And I'm going to move us over. And I will try to, I, I will get us a recipe, but just imagine that we're like, you know, that you're learning and kind of experimenting. 
There we go. Let's see how that works. What if we have curry leaves? Can we add curry leaves? Um, which kind of curry leaves are you talking about? Like the the ones which are called curry patta? I don't know. I'd have to look at the bag. I thought it was just one kind of curry leaf. Um, so normally curry leaves are used in a lot of South Indian dishes, but if you want, you could try to put a few in now and see how that tastes. It really doesn't. So this is a very North Indian meal, this Punjabi, um, this chole, chane, alu. It's called chole sometimes, it's called chane, some chana sometimes. So it's like primarily a North Indian dish. Um, and for lack of a better word, it's kind of like, you know, when you go to most restaurants, they always have North Indian food, which is um, a little discriminatory to like South Indian people and it's not fair. But yeah, this would be like a classic, um, North Indian base that we're making. So I, I don't know if you can see my onions. They're still getting there. They're not quite there. Um, I would say the curry leaves is like not really needed, but if you want, you could put a few in. If your onions are already nice and golden brown, and I mean like really like semi burnt golden brown, then add your ginger garlic. You can also start prepping your other stuff. Now, if you have chick Ellie, Ellie had a question, if there's rice in this recipe. So um, that's a good question, Ellie. And you can have this, I will eat anything with paneer in it. Oh, okay. So you can have this dish with pretty much anything from rice to quinoa. Um, you can have it with a bread, like a paratha, roti, naan. I'm going to make some quinoa over here just because I'm trying to like have more protein. So yeah, rice, this would be great with rice because the gravy is just going to soak into the rice. And so, um, so those of us that are having it with rice, should we get the rice started? Yes. If you're like whatever, like side sort of side dishes that you're like making, sure. Absolutely. In fact, I'm going to get my water going. And someone, the person who mentioned the paneer, you could, this could be like shahi paneer, which is like a very popular dish in most restaurants. It would be the same basic, um, it would be the same basic gravy. It would be the same, start the onions, get your ginger garlic in, put in the tomatoes, and then maybe you're like frying the paneer on the side, or maybe you're grilling the paneer, and then you add the paneer in. If you're not doing potatoes and chickpeas, you can do cauliflower, you could do eggplant, um, you could even do like chicken. And if you have some chicken, you could cube the chicken up and like marinate it in some lemon juice and olive oil, maybe some spices. So that would be chicken tikka masala. I know I'm going all over the place, but trust me, it's really like the same old, like if you look up any of these dishes, they all start with the same basic gravy, which is what we're trying to make. So, uh, there we go, that's better. Let me open some You started to say we could prep our other ingredients. Can you, like the chickpeas and stuff? Can you expand on that? Yes, yeah, so like I would, um peel your potatoes if you're like doing uh like potatoes if you like peeling them i like doing red potatoes i've kept the skin on um you can chop them to any size you like as small or as big but keep them the same and then the chickpeas um normally it would be that you cook the chickpeas you would soak the chickpeas overnight then cook them in boiling water but we're just doing canned chickpeas so Whatever veggie you plan on putting in, if you want to start prepping that, so onions already happening, ginger garlic is being um, minced and diced. I've already done all this, so that's why it looks like, like, like what's the cooking and I'm just stirring, but I'm going to share my favorite kitchen hack with you. Give me a second. Vandana, there's a question yes. from Ali for Lauderdale. Um, when do we add the tomato? 
So the tomatoes is the last part after the ginger garlic. We're not there like at all, unless you've already like sauteed your ginger garlic and it all feels like it's like ready to like burn or something, then you would add your tomatoes. But basically, okay, I'll, maybe I should just list the steps. Hot oil, onions frying, get them to nice golden brown, semi like burned. Ginger garlic goes in another minute. And then we stick in either tomato sauce, tomato puree, crushed tomatoes, or even fresh tomatoes diced. And you put it in the pan and cover the lid and wait till um, that cooks down and the oil separates. Um, the oil separating means that your base gravy is pretty much cooked at that point. So, so you would say that most of us are just at the onions frying, perhaps we've added the ginger and the garlic. Yes. So like my onions are pretty much getting there. I also bumped the heat up and I'm going to try and show you my pan. I don't know if it's going to like, ah, but yeah, so my onions are like kind of getting to that nice burn stage. And I'm going to just show you a quick hack that I do. And it's basically... I take a whole bunch of onion, a, a whole bunch of ginger and a whole bunch of garlic and I peel and slice and all that. And then I stick it in my blender and scoop it out into an ice tray and freeze them into these perfect little cubes of ginger garlic. And then when I need one, I just like pop it into my pan and that's it. So that's my like major kitchen hack, which has saved me like hours and hours of like ginger garlic because it's needed in pretty much in every Indian dish. I'm just taking my quinoa in. And I found this hack from like copious side dishes at the same time, yeah. And I found this little ginger garlic hack from like a some chef in London who talks about like, you know, how it's like the easiest thing. Um, speaking of hacks, uh, this- Vandana, before you go to the next hack, this hack that you just showed us, once yes. you've grated your garlic and your ginger, do you freeze it in oil, water, or what? So I um, don't even grate it. I stick it in my blender, I get it all minced, and then a little bit of water is fine, but oil is great. Because, and you can even put a little bit of salt because that just preserves it nicely. Um, you could even do like a mix of oil and water because essentially like once you put it in your pan, it just adds a tiny bit of oil and just a little bit of moisture. So my ginger garlic is in. And like I said, in terms of spices for any Indian dish, it's the whole spice and the hot oil in the beginning. We're still not touching any of the ground spice. We're just not at that stage. Once your ginger garlic gets like nice and happy, then you're putting in the tomatoes or your tomato sauce or tomato puree. And another hack I have is something which a friend of mine in New York used to do. So he used to make this giant pot with the onions and the ginger and the garlic and tomatoes. And then he would basically like either take Ziplocs or Tupperware and he would essentially just like freeze them. So then suppose this is my Tupperware of my onion, ginger, garlic, tomato sauce. He would take that out of the freezer and depending on what he wants to make, he would dump that in the pan and then add whatever like veggies or lamb or whatever and then the spices and that would be your dish. So. Essentially what we're making here, once you make that, you can add any kind of um, vegetables or meats. And then someone asked about the size of the potato cubes. It's really based on like what bite size size you like. I like, you know, something like that. I mean, half an inch, one inch. It's um, Indian cooking is a lot about like how you feel and like, you know how you see recipes that say salt to taste? So this is like all the spices to taste. So it's really like, you know, 
spices and even like the way you chop veggies there's no like it's just not like it's like the opposite of anything german it's very like fluid and very much like based on um, what works for you so i don't know if that's a good answer but and then uh, when do we know that the ginger and garlic is done it should again be a little bit like just golden brown and you should like feel like the rawness of the garlic is done like just gone and once you have that and it's all like nice and toasted and fried up then you can add your tomatoes or your tomato puree or your sauce so like mine is still kind of in this raw stage. I'm gonna show you. Like it's not really, you see how it's like white? So I'm kind of giving it another like 30 seconds or so. So the next step is the tomato. If your onions and ginger and garlic are done. Yep, if you're done with that, you're just adding your tomatoes. And I like to <clears throat> I like to double up and like add, like I'm gonna add a lot because I'm gonna like keep aside half of it and make like a chicken dish with the same sauce that I, with the same base for tomorrow. So I'm just adding like essentially like a can and a half. So yeah, I'm ready to like, this is good. I'm gonna add my tomato sauce. So we have some people that are faster than us. What if the tomato is done? Well, how if do we can... know that the tomato is done? How about we ask it that way? How do we know if our tomato is So done? you need to put the lid on and you need to see if the oil separates. And if the oil actually separates, then you know that, the, that, that it's all cooked through. And it essentially means like you literally have like the oil, like you should see like, um, the oil coming out, like oozing out. I know that's like kind of um, vague maybe, but it's like, that's the only way you know. So you really wanna like wait for, and you know, the color changes, the color from that bright red, it kind of changes and it becomes slightly different. So I put my, and if you put the lid on, that'll just like make it a little faster. Leah wants to know what comes after the tomato, but maybe she just brings her pan off and waits for us. Yeah, maybe, or or Leah, if you're like already, like you, your tomatoes are done, you should just add your potatoes in or just wait. I think it might be good if we all kind of get to the same stage. Um, onions are brown. This is so much fun. Oh, thank you. Hi, Haley. Oh, oh my God, God. you lost a lid. What could be a substitute for a lost lid? How about a cookie sheet? Or a plate? Exactly. And then when you touch it, just like use like some sort of a napkin. So I've got chickpeas and potatoes, but at this point, like if you want some other veggies, like if you have like peppers and you'd like that in your dish, or if you have like zucchini, um, or if you have, you know, just, you could like even shout out what temperature, when lid is on. Um, I would, everything is pretty much like low to medium. Nothing's on high. Everything's on like medium. Um, the potatoes, so this is kind of common sense, but the potatoes obviously take the longest to cook. Zucchini takes like barely any time. Um, and so in the order of what needs more cooking versus less like my chickpeas are essentially because they're canned chickpeas are essentially like cooked already so i'm going to put the potatoes in first let the let those cook first and then the chickpeas much later once i put my veggies in that's when i'm going to put the spices and then anita's been in one of the cooking classes before and she's like been through the whole process obviously we didn't have 48 people in that class so this is like feeling kind of crazy um but you guys are welcome to chat amongst yourselves 
and you know um play games or talk about favorite i house moments veggie going out of yes okay let's see how so yeah my let's, kitchen back sorry let's see was, what the confidence level was i don't know if people had a chance I don't, I don't i feel like not yet i feel like not yet i feel like if anything i might have confused everyone well let's bit. see at the beginning everybody was I guess it's a half and half. We have we have a lot of people that were mostly confident. One person that was very confident. Maybe that was Vandana. No, I haven't even actually put it. Well, anything. actually, that that was that was me. Some not so confident, some zero confidence. We'll see. Maybe we end. wait. Maybe we we'll wait till like end. actually trying our dish. So I want to show you guys something. So this is called chana masala. And it's essentially the spice blend that you would use for this dish. I didn't expect all of you to go around finding chana masala. Um, but all that goes to show is that depending on the spice blend that you use in any dish, it just changes up. So traditionally, these are like the classic masalas and I'm just going to point them out. So turmeric, ah, I'm going to drop this. There we go. So turmeric, cumin powder. Garam masala, cumin seeds, chili powder, coriander powder. And then this one's kind of unique. It's like mango powder called amchur, and it lends like a sour element. And usually if you don't have that, you just put a squeeze of lemon. Lots of people don't really like the taste of lemon. So that's why I never mentioned amchur, but otherwise it's really basic. Coriander powder, cumin powder, chili powder, and turmeric. So, um, if you feel like your oil has separated and your sauce is cooked through, I would add those potatoes in, a generous amount of salt and pepper and turmeric and toss it up. So that's the, probably the next step. And for those of you who are excited, interested about this chana masala, which I plan on using, it's basically got... I'm going to read the ingredients. So it's coriander seeds, dry mango, which is the one I showed you right now, salt, cumin, which I also had, chilies, again, we have that, black salt, and now it gets a little fancy, pomegranate seeds, um, tamarind, ginger, we're doing ginger anyways, mint leaves, fenugreek leaves, cardamom, nutmeg, cloves, mace, and... Cassia. I'm not sure what that is. So like, so basically, yeah, it really boils down to like the different spice blends, but garam masala, it's a classic. And I love the idea that you're using that because then you can kind of improvise and try different dishes. Andana, how do we know if we should use the whole spice or the ground spice? So usually most dishes have both. And like I said, if um, you have whole spices, you put it in the hot oil right in the beginning with your onions. You can't put them in now at this stage. At this stage now, when we put the veggies, we're gonna put our ground spices. And you can put both. So like I put the cumin seeds in the beginning and I'll probably put cumin powder also. And there's nothing wrong with that. Please don't be shy about like putting spice. I would say spice liberally. What spices did we get in the meal kits? You guys got garam masala. So garam masala, probably, I don't have a box of it. But like I said, it's usually cardamom, cloves, nutmeg, um, cinnamon, mace, star anise. There's different versions. And there's also turmeric. So, so if we I have a garna masala spice blend that doesn't have turmeric or some of the other things you mentioned, should we add that if we have them on our own? Yeah, completely. I, I feel like this is like one of those places where you should just like have fun and explore and like put more spices than less because frankly, Indian food really tastes good and it's all about the spices. So, um, you know, depending on what it is, like mustard seeds, is again a very South Indian thing. I'm just gonna take out some of my lovely sauce because I'm gonna use this in um, 
a chicken dish tomorrow. And if you want to try that, like you can literally take out like two whole spoons or three and, you know, try a second dish with it, like play around, experiment, do something different, or for that matter, literally Google something that you really like and see how it literally has the same onion, ginger, garlic, tomato, and go from there. So I've taken out a bunch and I have my potatoes already. So I'm gonna stick my potatoes in and um, salt, turmeric, pepper, and put the lid on and just kind of let, get the potatoes going. And I know some of the spices are very alien, like, you know, frankly, like mace and star anise, I've never like cooked with those. Um, and they're really specific, but I feel like cumin, coriander, chili, those are just, why did, oh, there's questions. I Should potatoes be put in raw or from boiled? I would put in raw potatoes, not boiled, because the idea is you kind of cook the potatoes in the sauce and it kind of goes into the flavor of the potatoes. So my potatoes are in and I missed a question briefly, but I'm just putting salt quite a lot because the potatoes like really need that. And I'm putting pepper, which lots of times people don't really put pepper in Indian food. Like it's in the garam masala most likely anyways, but if you like pepper, like there's no harm. And then again, the turmeric, just be liberal with it. It doesn't really taste like anything, but it does give that beautiful like golden color. And you all know like it's really good for you. It has antioxidants. It's, you know, um, an anti-inflammatory. So put the lid back on. I would say one really important thing about cooking the potatoes at this stage, there's already like a gravy in there, but you might need to put like a quarter cup of water. And so play with that. If you notice that it's sticking at the bottom, just add a little bit of water. And I missed a question. Looks like everyone's busy cooking, so I'm really happy. And I really hope everyone's food comes out great. And if it doesn't, don't blame me. <laughs> Hi, Claire, I just noticed you. Oh, and also I would say stick a little bit of sugar in because tomato-based sauces get really sour. So if you literally put like half a teaspoon of sugar, it balances it out. So like Indian food is all about kind of those like six tastes. It's like the spicy, the sour, the sweet, the pungent. So you want to kind of balance out all those. I hope you guys are playing music and like having a blast and just enjoying yourselves. Where should, when should we put the spices in? I would wait. So if you like, I put the potatoes in, I'm going to get the potatoes like half cooked somewhat. And then once they're half cooked, that's when I'm going to add my chickpeas and I'm going to add in all my spices. So um, do you have a music suggestion? Oh my God. Um, Radiohead or Gorillaz or something upbeat would be fun. I see Will and Masha. You guys, are you guys cooking? Cause you're like, just like, you are, okay. So yeah, at this point, potatoes are in, um, stick other veggies in. You can also, like I said, take some of that sauce out and play with this and make something um, new with it tomorrow. If you were doing paneer, you would put the paneer in instead of potatoes. Um, Indian dishes, which have that sort of orange color, what they do essentially is in the end, they put a splash of cream. So Megan's asking, do tomatoes go in with the potatoes? No. So tomatoes go in after the ginger garlic and you need to cook down the tomatoes. Like you don't want that raw tomato, like put a lid on. Yeah. So back to spices. Um, there's no right or wrong. 
there's some recipes which talk about putting the spices in at the onion ginger garlic stage but usually what happens is because everything's so hot we can um, burn the spices then the moment you have the tomatoes in it's like a little safer to then put in your ground spices because the chances are they won't burn um, the taste of burnt spices is no fun. There was one question I kind of missed about something. Um, if we were using raw tomatoes, how many would we need? Mm, I would put like two to three at least. Um, back to like the context of Indian food, because most of you like probably go to like Indian restaurant. If you were to put in, let's say, like whole tomatoes as opposed to pureed tomatoes, the way to that silky smooth gravy that they have is before you put in any veggies or potatoes or chickpeas or paneer, you literally take that, stick it in a blender, get it all smooth. If you put in like a cinnamon clove, like whole spice, you take that out, blend it up, stick it back in the pan, and then put in like, you know, cubed chicken or lamb or whatever um yeah i feel like i like started cooking when i was in i house i used to be in the south i bought myself one of those um rice cookers with a little steamer on top and at that stage i used to like go down and buy those like pre-made indian like dishes where you essentially like boil it in like some sort of an aluminum thing where you like stick it in a pot and heat it up. Then when I moved to the north, that's when I actually like tried to like start cooking and making dishes. I still remember when I was in the south, I would like try to cook, but then I would like, I was on the 10th floor and I would go down to the little kitchen and try to make something and then forget that I had like you know didn't have something so I'd go up so basically my I house south cooking days were really sad and not very productive but the I house, I, I house north days everything kind of started working out really well and I had some boyfriends who would help like chop onions which was like really helpful um so just a little thing about that so my I feel like my potatoes are like getting there and I also feel like I need some moisture in here because the the sort of tomato dish, the tomatoes are there, but I need to like add a little bit of water. So I've just added a tiny bit. I'm gonna give it a stir, put the lid back on. And then in terms of adding the spices, if you guys are already adding spices, I would say, imagine like you're putting salt and it's like, you need to salt everything. So like every little piece of your dish needs to have a little bit of that, um, like your, your powdered spice. So don't just put in like half a teaspoon. I would say put in at least um, one and a half teaspoons. So, I mean, I'm gonna like open this packet. I just snipped it open and I'm gonna literally like drizzle and that's how much. And hopefully your rice is done. Maybe you're making something else on the side. There's a baby with us and the mommy is holding baby. Hi, baby. Oh, there's other babies also. Hi, Frank. So I don't know where everyone's at right now, but hopefully um, you're at a good stage. I'm at this point, literally like in the next minute going to add my chickpeas and like add all my spices. And if you have other spices, like I said, beyond the garam masala, if you have, cumins, um, ground cumin, ground coriander. If you want some heat, you can add chili powder. The chili powder is the one that I wouldn't put too much of 
the big mistake lots of people make with chili powder is they put too much and the moment you do that it's kind of like salt there's no going back and what it does is it completely overpowers all the other beautiful spices um and that's when you know you eat something and it's just like oh my god my my mouth is burning this is hot um so it lose you kind of lose the point of like all the you know the balance of all the other um lovely spices and then if there's other people in the kitchen and they want to help you can kind of start making like you know um getting your cilantro as your garnish together usually in indian cooking it's always cilantro there's no um basil if you're making lamb you would put mint um something about anil i missed that anil is a dear friend was that anita i don't know no we're just chatting back and forth about vandana and anil trying to make dosas but those oh my are God. more south indian than north indian right Yes, but I have a story about Anil. So when I moved to the I House North, where I had my own kitchen, Anil was like, "Oh my God, I need to like use your kitchen, and we need to make dosas." And that, frankly, was the first time in my life that I had ever made dosas. And he came in like a rock star. It was like so much work, so much work, and he like knew exactly what it was all about. And um, yeah, we actually did that one time. dosa making and so did debra if you guys remember debra she used my kitchen yeah, and we debra i used to also and and i don't know is venit online i don't know if she joined us but venit's kitchen was also a reunion point for many of us i feel like i if venit showed up it would be only just to say hi and like i feel like any indian person who shows up would be like what's like why am i learning from another indian person like i got this i can call my mom i can call like my aunt or i don't know so i'm just like literally sticking in my chickpeas and i've added all my spices and now i'm putting in that chana masala which see how i just like kind of threw that in the more the merrier and then again i'm just stirring frankly my potatoes are not cooked but i wanted to get the spices in and like i said like feel free to like literally check in your fridge like do you have other veggies that don't need like lots of cooking you know like for example if you put carrots in you would put the carrots in like you want them nice and mushy you would put them in with the potatoes but if you want them nice and raw with a nice little bite then you would put them in literally um you know later on so there's no right or wrong but like getting that base is super important and you might notice that your dish it still looks orange from the tomatoes but it should look kind of more orange i feel because that it's a sign that like the tomatoes have cooked through with all the other stuff um if you have some cream or half and half i would say the drizz, like the the finishing points for your dish is you do a taste test on like you know spices and literally that's easy as easy as like taking a spoon and tasting like just the gravy part and you'll know if you want to add more spices if you want more heat if you want it to be a little sour just to balance it out squeeze a little lemon if you want it to be like restaurant style drizzle a little half and half or whole cream um yeah and then it's all about just waiting to see if your veggies your potatoes are cooked how nicely or how you know what like level of like cooking you want um haley i saw you just added the chickpeas so anytime you add more stuff maybe adding like a little bit more salt a little bit more something cool tip you can use the liquid from oh i can only read the first part but claire gave a tip was it the liquid from the chickpeas you can use the liquid from the chickpeas as an egg replacer works great with cookies 
I saw that where someone made like a mousse with like the water from the chickpeas and like you froth it up and then you put cocoa and I've seen like a really nice vegan mousse with the chickpea water. My like my favorite hack is literally like this bag, this Ziploc bag of ginger garlic, frozen cubes, which I'm gonna stick back in my freezer before they start like um getting mushy. And yeah, that's my favorite kitchen hack. If people want to share more kitchen hacks, that sounds like a really useless, useful, useful, not useless, useful thing. It's been a weekend, guys. Oh man. Well, um, um Oh, sorry. I feel like also being totally real and like maybe just like venting about like having a shitty week is totally valid. We are in a pandemic. We don't have to put up like this, you know, oh my God, glorified, beautiful, positive self. If Rich wants to say something, I've noticed he smiled or anyone else. Yeah. Well, I, I don't want to get in trouble here, but... I was I'm working with an hour time frame so don't get mad but I worked ahead and it's delicious it's so good and it's my first Indian dish ever that I've made and it's so delicious I'm like super excited and I'm eating it and thank you Vandana yeah Leah I'm so glad woohoo congratulations pat on the back and like I said if you want to like up it up like stick some cream in and I never like mention the cream because there's so much lactose intolerance and stuff, but yeah, that's like those finishing touches. And Megan, I noticed you asked about how many spice, how much spice? I would say spice liberally. What about coconut milk? Can we add coconut milk if we're lactose intolerant? Um, my potatoes aren't done yet. So I feel like my potatoes are not done yet either. I feel like coconut milk, it kind of goes with like a different style of Indian dishes um I wouldn't unless like there's coconut in my dish which is like that's more like a sambar which if you want to google it it's s-a-m-b-a-r um I would just wait my potatoes aren't done yet either I'm just gonna like give it another five minutes and keep stirring it once in a while you know um taste your gravy see if like taste the chickpea actually taste the chickpea could you tell us about what styles of India? I can't, I, I can only read the first like four sentences and I missed something about like I has not having something, ninth floor or something. Um, could you tell us about the styles of Indian food that use coconut milk? Okay, so it would be stuff from like the south of India, which is where you have all these coconut trees and a lot of like fish dishes. And um, yeah, it's, it's like North Indian food doesn't have coconut milk usually. It's all in the South. And the South Indian dishes are amazing and brilliant. And um, I've kind of taught myself how to make those too. Maybe we can do like a second like South India dive like next time. But those are, I feel like harder and take more prep. And you need tamarind and stuff like that. A lot of tamarind. And then I don't know, what was that thing about I house like ninth floor? Something. It was very cute. Somebody who's living in I house asked if anybody else in North has milk or cream. So I we can help them. And for any reason, if you feel like your dish is like not as flavorful, I would just say add more spice and see what happens. Sometimes like a lack of salt won't bring the spices out. So you need to like actually salt more um, because if you know you put a whole bunch of spices but it doesn't like taste like the spices, it's literally like, oh my God, I didn't put enough salt. And I really hope some of you like kept some of that onion, ginger, garlic, tomato stuff aside because a second dish with this, with any veggies or like a meat option would be like totally fantastic, like totally the bomb.
<laughs> and if you are doing chicken, just now while we're at it, like chicken tikka masala, which is like, you know, UK's national like dish now, obviously colonialism at its best. Um, you take chicken, you cube it up, you salt it, you put some oil, you put lemon, you put garam masala and you put yogurt and you marinate that. And then you stick it in your onion, ginger, garlic, tomato. When should rice be added? Oh, I guess just, you know, if you're eating rice, I guess you could make that. How many onions do you chop up? Um, okay, so yeah, if you have any side dish, I'm just gonna let you guys do that based on whatever you're having this with. Um, that's totally up to you. And in terms of onions, I feel like the organic onions are like way tiny, but like the regular onions are like these massive like alien onions and one is plenty. Like in India, we have these teeny tiny onions. Why is it important to have a lid when? I didn't read the whole thing. Ciara, can you read that question out please? Why is it important to have a lid on when cooking tomatoes and potatoes? So that's a really good question. There's literally a style of cooking in India, which is like essentially a steaming. So the onions, you would never put the lid on because you want to fry them, right? But then after that, like the tomatoes and the potatoes is literally like you're steaming the food, but it's also cooking at the same time in that, in the, in that sort of beautiful, like, you know, onion, ginger, garlic, kind of concoction. So essentially, yeah, a simple word would be, it's like a steaming technique. Um, Indian food doesn't use the oven that much, unless it's a tandoor, um, in which case it's like tandoori chicken, tandoori naan. A lot of the other dishes are essentially just stoved off. And it's a mixture of without a lid, frying stuff, and then sticking stuff in, putting a lid and just letting it cook in that. And that's where you just have to watch it like, and you need to add like little bits of water. Usually there's no stock used in Indian food, um, but you know, there's no harm in trying stock if you have stock and if you like, like if you want added flavor. And yeah, I feel like my potatoes are just about vaguely done. And this is like, uh, this was obviously a lesson in like, don't chop your potatoes like way too big. So mine were way too big for, for the time frame that we had. But maybe you guys did like smaller chopping potatoes and you know, they're already cooked. Like Leah's already having them. So that's nice. Hopefully. Any other questions? I feel like I might have ignored some questions or I barely answered them and I apologize. But hopefully as, as long as you've got like a dish that resembles something Indian that you've never made before and that tastes good, then I would say that's a home run. You mentioned a bay leaf, not in this dish. Um, so bay leaf, I would add a bay leaf in the right in the beginning with the oil if I was doing a meat dish. So if I was making, so like this concoction of my onion, ginger, garlic, tomatoes, what I'm gonna do tomorrow is I'm gonna marinate my chicken tonight. Um, like I said, just slice it up, put stuff. And then tomorrow I'm gonna take my pan, put hot oil, put my whole spices, right? All of these guys. And then kind of um, sear my chicken in that infused spiced oil. Kind of halfway, add this stuff in, put some water, put the lid on and just let it cook. I don't know if that helps. But, um, yeah, if you guys go for like an Indian cooking class with like, I, I, India doesn't have like a cordon bleu. If we did, it would still be really like very much like whimsical, kind of played by ear. Um, 
very little measuring, but usually, you know, depending on how big your pot is, how many like people you're feeding, it's like those kind of parameters. Leah left. This is so helpful. Oh, thank you, Will and Masha. Um, you guys didn't tell me your favorite Indian dishes. If you literally like shout out a few more, I would be happy to see if like this basic one that we made has like a leeway point that you can make some of those pandemic during the pandemic. Yeah. I, I have one I've wondered about, um, which is anything with the sag, with the spinach. I really love that chana sag or any, I don't do paneer because I'm lactose intolerant, but um, I was wondering about that. So that's like literally again, onion, ginger, garlic. Okay, I got two more. Onion, ginger, garlic, tomatoes. Then you take, there's two ways of going about it. So there's, you take your spinach. Some people like to blanch it and then do like that ice cold water shock business. I feel like that's kind of like too much. So you take your spinach, you blend it, and then you stick it into that same beautiful sauce and it gives you that sag. And then you can put in your potatoes and it becomes aloo sag and the potatoes cook in. You put your garam masala on top and your salt. Um, yeah, if you do like chicken, I guess you don't, but that would be like the sag sauce. It would be the same, onion, ginger, garlic, not that many tomatoes. The chicken tikka masala, that's literally what I was saying earlier. That's what I'm gonna make tomorrow. I'm gonna take my chicken breasts. I'm going to cube them, like bite-sized. Oh my God, chapati, I love chapati. So bite-sized cubes of chicken, take a bowl, salt, turmeric, lemon juice, oil, yogurt, and garam masala. Marinate, marinate, marinate. If you have a grill pan, amazing. Grill your chicken the next day. Doesn't have to cook all the way. Take the same sauce you just made with the onion, ginger, garlic, tomatoes, and then your chicken, which is half cooked, you stick it in, put a little water and let it cook. And that's, I swear that's chicken tikka masala. Like if you Google that, it's literally, it's the same. And then yes, the cream makes it like super uber rich and delicious. Bengan bharta, I saw that too. You take your eggplant, um, roast it in the oven. If you have a grill, you pretty much like grill the, the Jesus out of it, meaning the skin of your eggplant is like burnt, which means that the inside is cooked. You peel the skin off and get rid of all of that. If you do it in the oven, oven again, you peel the skin off, you mash it up, you mash up your eggplant, and then you stick it in the onion, ginger, garlic, tomato, put some spices, mash, 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 and it's bang and bharta. So, yeah. I like, I, I urge you to like go and look up some of these recipes online <clears throat> and notice the, um, huge kind of leaning on the onion, ginger, garlic, tomato basis. And you'll see that they're very like, it's like apples and oranges. It's really like a small degree of variation. And then the second variation is the spice blend. And that's pretty much it. And then hopefully you guys have like a meal ready. And I know that we're already like over our one hour mark. Um, so I, I like, I'm not gonna end this, but anyone who has to leave and just like wants to eat, please feel free. Anyone who wants to stick around and chat, that's cool too. Um, um, I don't know if Siegia is still there. Ciara's like, is Ciara like doing her polls? I don't know where that's at. Yes, Anyone? I'm still here. Yes, I'm just playing in the background, letting you and Ciara take the lead. You guys are doing a great job. <laughs> you want me to do the last poll? Yes, oh, please. Okay, I'll do the last poll. It's the same question I asked at the beginning. We're gonna we're gonna do a temperature check on your confidence level. Oh my god. <laughs> I 
I saw some great comments. I missed them. Also, I feel like this is like a forum where as uh, humanity is like undergoing a huge upheaval, if anyone does want to vent, we're all open ears. On the other hand, if you have like something that, oh, Venezia, yeah. If you have something that was horrible, I'm open to like that, good, bad, and ugly. But, you know, hopefully everyone has a great weekend. And um, so, yeah. yeah, and also so before you leave, fill out the survey so we can know. <laughs> oh, and then if you guys want to find me on Facebook as my Prana Buzz, it's P R A N A underscore buzz, like B U Z Z. And um, I might try to do this again. I might try to do an online yoga class, like an I house yoga class, and maybe Anita can like. We can do like a chair meets like, you know, some kind of like a collaboration. But um, I hope everyone's doing great. And for those of you who I don't know, I'm so glad you guys joined. And please fill out the survey. And yeah, I mean, try this at home. And seriously, if you even want to email me. Um, uh, I think we Chris did good. I think we did good. Oh my good. God, mostly confident. Mostly confident. <laughs> let us know how your dishes taste yes yes My, mine is delicious a squeeze of lemon is always great in the end if you don't have the anchur which is that mango powder just to give it a little tart balance the spice a little splash of cream is like unctuous luxury and then otherwise just good old cilantro as garnish is always awesome. <laughs>